one of the conversations that um, just popped up again in the Slack, which uh, Felipe posted um, just moments ago, uh, speaking about flat ontologies, is I, I think actually, um, even though Felipe, you, you were saying uh, maybe we don't want to take up time in the, in the seminar with this, but it's, a, it's an interesting jumping off point because we could say, uh, to what degree do we bring the concern for the human to a set of design questions, design challenges, and design responses? Uh, if we're thinking, attempting to think across multiple scales, then presumably, one part of the design approach will be to design for a collective of humans across decades, centuries, millennia. And, you know, to quote from the three body problem in Dark Forest again, you know, the birth of a new civilization is the birth of a new morality. I'm not saying I agree or disagree with that, but just offering it as a, as a provocation. Uh, and so if you're designing a space for people to live in over the course of a lifetime, again, think back to the limits to growth diagram I showed, people thinking about their, their own lives, their families a few weeks out, a few months out, maybe a couple of years out, maybe a, maybe a lifetime out uh, versus some who can think across multiple lifetimes or civilizational arcs and ask yourself in that kind of unpacking and framework, who you're designing for. And I would have to say that vision is my vision's greatest enemy. Because for me, in a funny way, even though Lukash would probably have disavowed his earlier work, I would say that the way he unpacks the rupture of modernity in theory of the novel it precisely identifies that modernity is not a time period. Modernity happens whenever a civilization develops some form of techne, which could be language, it could be culture, it could be a photographic device, um, it could be philosophy, it could be mathematics, which allows it to perceive itself in the act of perceiving and to construct that kind of feedback loop of meta perception. And that, that creates a break in time where the culture no longer sees itself at one, either with the world or with its myths or models or ontologies of the world. And that's where the techne question becomes very interesting because on the one hand, you could say as a historian, as a designer, you could say, okay, well, here's techne. Techne is the way I handle heat in a building system, heat and, and cooling in a, in a building system. That's, that's a form of techne or how I make sure that the skin of the building doesn't leak or let dust come through in the middle of a dust storm or shades the inhabitants properly. Yeah, that's, that's a form of techne. Well, language is a form of techne. Photo, a photographic mechanism is a form of techne. A hammer is, is a form. And in each of those cases, the question that we would wanna ask is to what degree does it afford uh, the feedback loops necessary for the agent coupled to it to perceive itself in the act of using the tool. One would be to say, okay, well, there's, there's very specific technicities and they're in, materially embedded and precise to the cultural frameworks that they emerge from. And they're not universal. They simply are not universal. The way that you gesture to say hello to your friend on the street is different than the way that I gesture if we emerge from different cultures, if we grew up on different sides of the planet. But then if you're a kind of from, um, taking it from a macro historical perspective, you could say like, maybe like Gary Tomlinson does, uh, okay, but gestures, gestures are, are a universality amongst humans, not just physical gestures, but linguistic gestures, cultural gestures, emotions, gestures of emotion, gestures of affect, thought, structures of feeling. And so it doesn't matter if you grew up in one culture which says hi to everybody like this, and I grew up in another culture which says hi to everybody like this, we both say hi to each other. You know, it's it's funny because now I'm thinking I got to make sure I don't get lost in in this um, in this you know ramification of of this train of thought. But I'm thinking of the GPT three AI response to my comment about gesture that I showed you folks last week. You know, and this AI responding to me raising the problem of universal gesture in a Gambon finishes with little you know 
two or three sentence paragraph about the idea that when the hand is, is, is outstretched, even after the handshake or if the handshake doesn't happen, you know, there's an implied extension of the gesture in time, which I found completely fascinating. But anyway, to loop this back to the question of universality and techne, where do you as a designer, not just you, Mustafa, but all of, all of you, all of us, where do we identify the limiting framework around a definition of universality or of techne? If we look at all of human history, and we zoom way back out and we look at thousands of years of human history. And I tried to index that with the Cave of Forgotten Dreams example. And, and Herzog obviously was you know, fascinated with that. The archeologists and scientists who are studying the handprints in the cave and notice that the pinky on the hand of one of the people who made those handprints was, was a little bit kind of twisted. And they saw the handprint in other places in the cave. So they knew that the different handprints were made by the same person or they, they conjectured that it was likely. They're looking down 20,000 or 30,000 years to a set of morphological similarities, isomorphisms between the intentionality of a human today to record something and the intentionality of a human 20 or 30,000 years ago to record something. 